Welcome back. Today, Julie and I are sharing with you eight explosive reasons to feel optimistic and brace this new housing boom. What are we talking about? Well, we're going to share with you eight reasons why you should absolutely positively feel incredibly optimistic. Oh, yes, by the way, we're well aware of the interest rates. We're well aware of the inventory problem. We're well aware of the commission sharing lawsuits. We're well aware of the changes to uh, all the other things that are happening. But there are more reasons, far more reasons to believe uh, that this is going to be the start of a very, very long-term housing boom, even though it's kind of having a little ebbs and flows as it starts. But we're going to share with you the eight top reasons today. Now, if you want the notes from today's podcast, which all of you will, especially if you have a team or brokerage or whatever, maybe you want to use this content for your social media. We have made it very easy for you to get access to our long-form notes. You just have to simply subscribe to our newsletter. It's called Harris Real Estate Daily.com. HarrisRealEstateDaily.com. And the link to join is below in the show description, or you can just go to HarrisRealEstateDaily.com and use these notes to your heart's desire. And also a lot of our other past podcasts are there as well. Um, the problem is, is that uh, the reason we couldn't put our notes in the show descriptions anymore of iTunes and whatnot is because they're no longer allowing us to put all of our notes in um, the show description. So we had to start the newsletter. So it's called HarrisRealEstateDaily.com. You have to go there. You have to double opt in. What does that mean? You're going to put your email address there uh, in the little form, and then it's going to send you an email. In some cases, the, e the email is going to get sent to your spam or your junk folder. So you're going to have to look for that, uh, the double opt in there and click subscribe and then you'll be off to the races. I know that's happening probably about 50% of the time. I apologize for that. It is out of our control. But if you did opt in and you're not receiving the newsletter, that is where the information is. Included in the information, or included in the newsletter, not only are the audio uh, and the videos from the podcast, but also the uh, notes and we're all we're going to start including extra content just for newsletter subscribers um, for example a bunch of interviews that we're doing with some top coaching clients and some of the biggest agents in the nation so all that is coming to you when you subscribe to harris real estate daily.com so julie yes. eight reasons to feel incredibly optimistic about 2024 and beyond that's right so today we are taking a step away from the drama speculation and panic caused by the nar commission lawsuit settlement we are going to reset everyone's mindset. As you said, we're talking about eight reasons to be optimistic. And don't worry, we will return to upgrading your buyer skills this week in future podcasts. We have a lot of things in the works for that. The fact is that even after upgrading your best buyer practices, as many of you are already working on, embracing, learning, and using your buyer presentation, if you don't have a powerful mindset, you'll be unlikely to use your new skills at the level necessary to thrive in the new real estate world. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the eight reasons now, starting with reason number one. Reason number one, inventory. This is my favorite point. Inventory is back and rising steadily. This is the most exciting news this month. It's what we've all been waiting for. NAR head economist Lawrence Yoon said, additional housing supply is helping to satisfy market demand. Housing demand has steadily risen due to population and job growth, though prevailing mortgage rates and wider inventory choices will determine the actual timing of purchases. So that's kind of a Melba toast reaction to the increase in inventory. So we were not satisfied at that. We did some more research. Rising demand and lower rates should fuel a better year for sales. So for example, for the week ending March 15th, there were 507,000 single family homes on the market. That's up 1.3% from the previous week, but 24% year over year and an amazing 105% increase from two years ago. That's from Altos Research, which tracks every sale in the country every week. Inventory is growing nationwide and has been consistently increasing each week. These numbers don't even include all of the new construction, which is our next point. Now, you ask yourself, why are there so many new homes coming for sale when so many of these owners were locked in, you know, the you know golden cage, they're all locked in with these low interest rates? It's because people buy and sell for normal reasons. They're getting, you know, they're having a larger family. They don't need, uh, you know, a, a large of a house anymore. Maybe they don't want to have a two story anymore. Maybe they got relocated. Maybe all they inherited the property, all the normal reasons that are far outside of interest rates and monthly payments will ultimately prevail with increasing inventory. We predicted this. It's obviously starting to happen. Guys, there's no other way to say it. There is a dramatic increase in inventory coming to the market. And if it's not, you know, if you're not yet experiencing it, you certainly will. And number two is going to reinforce the increase 
inventory of not just new construction homes, but also resale. I'm glad you pointed out that people move because of circumstances over interest rates and all of the rest. They move because they need to, because they have to. And in fact, I'm working on, on a future podcast. There's been a lot of analytics lately that say the third and fourth week of April is statistically the best time to sell a house. It's when the most buyers are out there. It's when people are putting their house on the market because they want to move during the summer before school goes back. So we'll talk to you more about that on a future pod. Speaking of new construction, point number two, builders are officially bullish. The National Association of Home Builders has published its Builders Confidence Index for 35 years, so we do have a way of comparison. In March of 2024, the index rose three points to 51. Now, anything greater than 50 is considered bullish. What goes into that index? It has three components. These are the things that builders are thinking about. Current building conditions, future conditions, and buyer traffic. They report that all three components are coming in high. For comparison, the Builder Confidence Index was only 44 this time last year. And that's probably because rates had gone up at the beginning of last year and they were waiting to see what happened. You know, it's also fascinating, Julie, as we're going through these points, as people start to settle in to the, uh, you know, the new buyer agency rules and how it's all going to work. And you and I have talked endlessly on this podcast about that and we'll continue to. Um, you're going to see, I think, a, a calming of a lot of nerves mm -hmm. amongst the agent agents and brokerages and whatnot. You're going to see a lot of people just realizing that, you know what, all is fine. There's been some changes. We'll adapt. Let's get back to work. And what's mm -hmm. going to really, I think, uh, fuel that uh, increase in optimism from the rank, rank and file agents is this dramatic increase in inventory and new construction that's starting. It, so something else to think about, guys. I'll, and again, this is going to be what we're going to be talking about in six months a dramatic increase, not just in new uh, build starts, but also closings, because there were a lot of uh, homeowners or rather builder bu build buyers who went into contract to build something six months ago. Those houses are going to be finishing up about now. In addition to that, they're going to be putting the resale homes for sale, thus sparking more inventory. We're going to see a steady obvious increase in the number of homes for sale. It's been Julie and I's premise for a long time that yes, the interest rates were high, but the reason that there were fewer home sales wasn't because of the higher interest rates. It was because of the lack of inventory. Now you can say, you know, what? Uh, what's more important, inventory or rates? A lot of people think that lower rates will fuel more, uh, you know, more transactions, that's more inventory. And I think that's true, but we can all agree that even with interest rates back where they were kind of on the ugly side of, you know, high 8% mm -hmm. or whatever, yep. if there had been more inventory, people would have still been buying those homes for sure. Well, I agree 100%. And keep in mind that new construction actually takes care of both of those problems because what do builders do? They buy down the interest rate. That's so right. you have the best of both worlds. For example, in January, housing starts rebounded 11% month over month to a million and a half units. That's fantastic. February was up 6% year over year and completions jumped. To your point, the more that's completed, that will in turn spark more resale inventory. Completions jumped to 1.7 million units, up 20% month over month and 10% year over year. That's the fastest pace of new construction completion since January of 2007. While some of those starts are multifamily, the majority are single family homes. It's about a 20% multifamily and the rest is single family. Oh, and quick reminder, builders almost always pay whatever the market rate commission is and they're not, they're not putting their inventory in the MLS. So it's going to be super obvious what the builders are paying. <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, several of my coaching clients have done, let's do this homework because they're already ahead. They've done this homework and then we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. Homework for everyone listening, take a tour of all the available new construction in the zip codes you typically work in plus at least a 10 mile radius around those uh, zip codes. Refer to our podcast about how to utilize new construction and keep in mind that more than 30% of the available inventory is new construction. So for example, some of our smartest coaching clients have already done this. They've done their tour of new construction. They've expanded geographically because where do builders build? They build where the land is. That might be the county next to you. It might not be your backyard. And what they've done is they've compiled essentially their own uh, collection of new construction where they say, name of the builder, their favorite sales rep, what's the price range, what's the area, what is the builder paying in commission, are they buying down rates, do they have spec homes, and they have this mini uh, directory, if you will, of who their favorite builders are. So I'll give you an example. We used to sell a lot of MI homes. One of the things that MI is doing is they're being more lenient on um, home sale contingencies. Instead of just kicking you to the curb and saying, you got to start over, now your house is a spec house, they will allow in some of the areas, I'm not speaking universally for MI, in some of the areas they will allow an, an extension of 90 days to get your home on the market and get it sold. 
Uh, they'll be more lenient. They're doing buy downs. They're doing all kinds of cool stuff. So if you don't know in your market who's doing that, then naturally you're missing out on opportunity. Speaking about uh, missing out on opportunity, why haven't you joined Premier Coaching yet? We made it incredibly easy for you to do so. You can join now for 30 days for absolutely free. Look, the timing is perfect. Spring market. You know you need to update your skills. You know you want to help people make money this year. You need to know how to do it given all the changes in the housing market and really the housing industry. Premier Coaching is your natural, normal, obvious solution. So just go to premiercoaching.com, premiercoaching.com, or scroll down to the show description and click the link to join premiercoaching.com. Again, it's very simple. Just go to premiercoaching.com and you'll have immediate access to the first level of Premier Coaching, including a daily semi-private coaching call. Absolutely no risk to you. What are you waiting for? Literally thousands of agents join Premier Coaching every single year. It's your turn. Go to premiercoaching.com or scroll down and click the link below. Point number three, Julie Harris. Yes, optimism point number three, rates will come down this year. Rates are currently just a tick under 7%, which is already an improvement from the beginning of the year. We see that in mortgage applications being up already with rates just barely dipping under 7%. The Federal Reserve kept its short-term interest rates steady for the fifth straight meeting. It is still forecasted to reduce rates by about 75 basis points starting this summer. They're uh, predicting about three different rate cuts. A basis point is not what you guys think it is. A basis point is like three quarters, that would be three quarters of 1%, basically. Right. So, yeah. but coming down is, is what's yeah, most Yeah, coming important. down. So the interest rates will go down. Yes. So even though rates are higher than we'd all like for now, there are still many ways to secure a mortgage with a below market rate interest rate. We discussed this in Premier Coaching, and we've done several podcasts about different methods for your buyers to achieve this 3 to one buy downs, paying points, and locking in 30-year fixed all uh, adjustable rates. So if you missed those podcasts, that's a good way to have a surface view. And then to do the drill down, of course, you'll want to be a premier coaching member. And reason to feel optimistic. Number four is a total head scratcher. The new <laughs> rules from NAR or the new rules from NAR uh, regarding the commission settlement are good news for your business. Well, that's a tongue twister. The, the new rules from the NAR settlement are good for your business. Now that a signed buyer representation agreement is required, it will be much easier to determine which buyers in your pipeline are the most serious, qualified, and motivated. Of course, this assumes that you are following the buyer system, pre-qualifying with scripts, presenting your value, and closing for the signature. And we've been talking a lot about this on the podcast, and obviously it's been the topic du jour over on Premier Coaching. Um, and with Premier Coaching, you're going to have our complete buyer presentation you're going to have the a buyer pre-qualifying script. You're going to have in, basically a turnkey solution to all the changes that are going to be in effect mid-year of this year. So the buyer presentation that you need to show your value to prospective buyers, it's done for you. We're updating it actually. Julie and I are updating it this week. If you're looking for the scripts, the pre-qualifying scripts, all of it is there. Just join Premier Coaching. And again, it's premiercoaching.com. We'll scroll down below and click the link below. Brokers. You're going to be required to have this information available to your agents with regards to how to ask for exclusive buyer agency contract signed. Team leaders, same thing. Don't try to create it on your own. We've already done it for you. So just join premiercoaching.com or scroll down below um, and then click the link to join. And that's about to include some objection handling for when you're doing your presentation and you're closing and they throw out something like, well, maybe I don't want to be committed long term or I'm not really sure if I want to do that yet. We're going to handle all of that. That's all going to be included. Unique selling propositions yes. as to why they'd want to, you know, essentially have you as their exclusive agent mm -hmm. versus Bob next door at the other brokerage. All that good stuff is there. Yes. Okay. Optimism point number five. There's a lot to this. I just pulled out some specifics and that is demographics are on your side between the demand for homes from millennials and Generation Z, keeping in mind that even with higher rates, 24% of sales have been first time buyers in the past year, despite again, higher rates, still 24% are first time buyers. I'll say new Americans, Julie, not immigrants necessarily. New Americans. And, and there's a steady supply of buyers ready to achieve the American dream. Uh, and Julie's got a lot of interesting stats, so get ready to write these down. Take, for example, these stats about Hispanic buyers. The National Hispanic Homeownership Rate reached 49.5% in 2023. That's a net gain of 377,000 over the previous year. According to the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals, which many of you belong to, that's uh, what you call NAREP, N-A-H-R-E-P, 9.5 million Hispanic households do own their own home. And in 2023 alone, Latinos saw a net gain of 450,000 new households and were responsible for 25.5% of overall U.S. household formation growth. 
Of the 49.5% homeownership rate, that was a close to a record high in census data going back to 2000. Texas, Pennsylvania, and Georgia lead the way with the highest net migration to those states. That's from Freddie Mac data. And I looked up, well, why Texas, Pennsylvania, and Georgia? Because those have some of the most affordable markets. There's a lot more to choose from and a lot of inventory there. But it's really what matters most from this point, from point number five, are the demographics. Julie was talking a lot about essentially new Americans, but we're also talking about the fact that there's an enormous number of normal uh, up, you know, people that need to downsize, upsize. For example, baby boomers, a lot of them, you know, are wanting to downsize. They're wanting to sell the houses where they raise mm-hmm. their kids. Generation X, Julie Nice generation. Well, you know, a lot of us are still moving up or buying second homes or whatever. Then you really have where the real uh, activity is going to be. You have the millennials. The average millennial is 38 years old now. And they're in the uh, family. Actually, I think the oldest millennials in their early 40s, I think 42 or 3. But a bulk of them, essentially most, uh, when you're around 38, almost 40, that's when the average person is buying their first home now. But there's not enough inventory of homes for sale. There's been different things that Julie and I have read. But if you look at the number of people that want to buy a home and can afford to buy a home when there's a home there for them to buy, the, the demand is so outstripping the supply that's, you know, that's not the only reason there's so much inflation appreciation in real estate, but that's certainly one of them. And, and if you go down, you know, essentially to the younger generations as well, the, everyone talks about how the baby boomers, you know, controlled so much of the economy for so long and they still are. But if you compare the total number of baby boomers, which should have been in here, it would have been good to know, mm-hmm. compared to, say, for example, the millennials and, you know, Generation Z and all the rest of it, I bet you there's four or five times as many um of the younger generations that are all of the baby boomers. I think boomers. that's right. I've read that before. And if you look at the baby boomers and you look how much influence they had on every single thing, the food you ate, the cars you drove, where people chose to go on vacations. Without the uh, the baby boomers, you never would have had all the cruise industry and all these other <laughs> you know, True. sport utility vehicles and all the rest of it. Well, when you look to see the influence and the, the really in social influence and economic influence the younger generations have, but if you look to see the influence that they have on real estate, it's going to be insane. It, that's the thing that nobody is talking about. I'll tell you guys right now, when people ask Julie and I what our you know forecast is or our opinion of getting into real estate long term, it's very simple. As long as you have that much demand, as long as you have that many people want to buy what you have for sale, you know, or it's five to six to one, you know, buyers for every single listing or something along those lines, you're never going to have a slow market. It's you're never going to have it, as long as you have demand. Yeah. As long as you have people lining up around the, the, you know, the corner, quite literally, some of you guys are doing open houses and experiencing <laughs> that, you have nothing really to worry about. It gets back to supply ultimately. That's ultimately, so yes, again, that's Julie and I's earlier point. We have a supply problem. The supply problem to point number one, two, and three is in its, on its way to curing itself. You have no demand problem. You're going to have a surge of sales. It just makes, it makes total sense. Which was a great segue to optimism point number six, sales, you just said, are up. According to an NAR report last week, existing home sales rose 9.5% in February, raising the yearly prediction from 4 million they were projecting in January to 4.38 million. These numbers should continue to grow hand in hand with increased resale inventory and increased new construction. Add a dash of lower interest rates, which are on the horizon, and we should have a hotter market very soon. Point number seven. AI, you have a new free or super cheap, highly professional assistant to revolutionize your business. AI will continue to assist you in everything from scheduling to analyzing multiple offers to writing copy, finding inventory, searching for the best loan products, being your video avatar, and many more advantages. And we do have a podcast coming soon all about the ways that you can take advantage of AI. And I believe we're going to add some of that to the newsletter as well. We are, but drill down on point number seven. So what you're going to see is that a lot of the teams and these mega teams that have been out there that, you know, have 14 assistants and 17, this is and all these, you know, really incredibly high uh, cost, most of which is going to labor. Those people in a lot of ways, like for example, Julie and I were researching different aspects of AI for a brokerage we've been consulted with forever that they want to get rid of the people that are actually taking the inbound calls to do the pre-qualifying. Well, guess what? There is AI out there right now that will, this is going to blow your mind. You guys are going to ask for who is doing this, but it was only in a test format yet. It's, It's not publicly available, but here's what this AI does. Either through text, voice, or video, you're going to be able to contact an AI, a super assistant. Let's call them that. And the AI super assistant, let's say it's video, which will be the most advanced format, is going. you're going to do a video chat 
with a person that's AI who will be indistinguishable, call it a deep fake AI assistant, right? Will be indistinguishable from a real person using an indistinguishable, you know, real person voice, asking questions, having conversation flow, which is indistinguishable from a real person. That is going to be what all of you are going to have to look forward to when it comes to pre-qualifying leads. Right now, one of the, and hopefully all of you will agree with this, one of the biggest ways, easiest ways for you to improve your business and cash flow is to be better with your lead follow-up. Julie and I have talked endlessly about furiously fast lead follow-up. Well, your AI virtual assistants, which we believe will be publicly available within the next six to, well, I'll say 60 to 90 days. The, the ones that are going to be coming out of beta, beta and they're going to be willing to, uh, they're going to be able to, you know, have you guys start testing these. You can even have it be your own face and your own voice. You could literally have it so that when someone goes to your website or fills out a form, you can be the one that pops up and you can have this indistinguishable, you know, one-to-one -one conversation with that pr a prospect. That will cause your business to skyrocket like you cannot fathom. Now, all of us have experienced AI through chat and it works great. But AI, when it goes to the, the realms of what I just described, will change everything. You can have an AI virtual assistant that's going to start doing your transaction coordination. You can have an AI virtual assistant that's going to start calling for better feedback. And then once it gets the feedback from that co-op showing, it's then going to call your seller and give them the feedback. You guys get it? This is what we all have to look forward to, which is going, and this AI is not going to be, initially it'll be expensive, but over a very short period of time, it won't be as expensive because it's just software. And um, then what's going to mean, that's going to mean is you're going to start being able to increase the level of service you offer to your customers and decrease the, your actual monthly expense. So yes, in some markets, there's going to be commission compression, but it won't really matter ultimately because there's also going to be a compression of your expenses. Now, if you talk about social media as it pertains to AI, that's what's truly bonkers. You're going to be able to have, you guys know about these deep fake, you know, fake Insta, Instagram influencers, all kinds of different things, right? There's people now that, again, there's this technology that's available. You guys can actually Google this, AI fake Instagram influencer, and you'll read all about it. You're going to be able to very soon have an AI fake influencer created for you, which will start creating all kinds of AI generated social media content for you. I'm not just talking about con, uh, texts on you know, X, I'm talking about, or threads. I'm talking about comments that are, are videos, lot, videos of you presenting information about what interest rates are doing. Or maybe you're gonna use the notes that Julie and I are presenting to you guys today and you're gonna have your AI create it. Now, if you wanted to be the one that is actually in the video presenting this information, you can. Again, to the earlier point with regards to customer service, all of this is going to be essentially one, two, three simple. Now, you're going to say, well, I don't know how to do all this. It seems like you guys are talking about something from the future. It's going to be overwhelming. Don't worry about it. There are going to be so many people that are going to create uh, essentially services where they're then going to essentially, or they're going to be like wedding planners for your whole AI social media revolution. If you felt like you were left along the side of the road, uh, as all these younger millennial types started creating tons and tons of social media and oh my gosh, you'll never be able to catch up and oh my gosh, you don't want to create videos. Well, guess what? Turns out you were smart for waiting <laughs> because the AI content is going to be able to be just as good, if not better than all the effort that was put into the live content. Social media influencers, those of you who have put a lot of uh, you know effort in this, you're going to be an advantage because you already have it in you know, essentially the framework the groundwork uh, established for launching to the next level. But yes, that means every single day, you know, 65 year old Bob from Omaha is going to be able to create five to six high quality, stellar, long form videos, short form videos. He's going to have an AI thing, create as much social media content and the social media content is going to be as good, if not better than what the biggest influencer in, you know, your real estate marketplace is able to do now. That is another thing that's going to have a revolutionize a lot of the ways some of you who have, you know, been maybe not as aggressive or progressive really with thinking about lead generation, it's all going to circle back and you're now going to have the wind at your back. If that doesn't make you feel optimistic, if that doesn't make you feel excited, in addition to all the previous points, I think number eight certainly will. <laughs> Very well said. And how many times have we ever said on any podcast, go you for waiting? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? 
ironically. Procrastinators win. There you go. Very unusual. So mark this date. You heard it. You might not hear it again. All right. Point number eight on our optimism list. There will be no precipitous decline in home prices. I know you've seen some headlines last week because of the NAR thing. Oh, this is going to translate into home price decline. No, 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 no. Supply is still at least a million homes shy. Some people say as much as three million homes shy of demand. And to our previous points, demand is increasing. Appreciation slash inflation is slowing, but not stopping. According to NAR, the median price for all types of existing homes rose 5.7% yearly to just under 400,000. All regions had gains with double digit percent growth in the Northeast of 11.5%. And that's, you know, during three years in a row where we've had suppressed number of sales, we still have increased home prices. Now, according to Redfin, this is something you've got to keep in mind in your presentations, guys. The average home in the U.S. has increased by an amazing 45% since 2019. Other places have uh, reported that as much as like 51%. So somewhere in that range has gone up by 45 to 50%. Remember this when you're worried about a seller covering the buyer agent's commission. If the seller nets what they need to make a move, which they will, Paying two commissions should not cause much duress. Now, and also, but yeah. also remember, there's a bunch of other ways to get the buyer agent's commission. We talked about this in previous podcasts. Um, but yeah, I mean, in a lot of cases, frankly, the seller is going to be happy with the net that they're making because they just won the real estate lottery. I do want to kind of take a little half step back, Julie. Sure. There were an unbelievable amount of absolutely stupid articles were written by people that shouldn't have been stupid. Completely. Smart people writing stupid articles about, like the one that I just thought was hilarious. I think mm -hmm. it was New York Times actually. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know what I'm going to say, right? Mm -hmm. Where they were predicting or they were, you know, pontificating about the fact that, oh, guess what? Now that sellers no longer have to pay a buyer's agent commission, the sellers are going to pass that savings on to the buyers and are now going to lower their prices. So if the house was going to be listed for, you know, 500,000, let's say, now they're going to list it for 485,000 because they don't have to pay a 3% uh, co-op. That would happen never in any world uh, in by, a million years. That a seller would never have that thought. Can you imagine meeting with a seller where they just read that New York Times article and they're going to like, damn, let's lower our prices. Yeah. Evident by the fact <laughs> that uh, your guys' voicemail is not just burning up with sellers calling you that are already listed right now saying, hey, let's just reduce the price because we don't have to pay a buyer side commission. That is not happening. We know that also because builders don't do that and for sale by owners don't do that. So yeah, I just step away from those headlines. And, and you know, honestly, if there's any... Um, if there's any real precipitous drop or any brokerage or any of these new business models that people are kind of threatening that's going to adversely affect the buyer agent commission, they're going to be at a disadvantage because the market forces will make it so that, again, we talked about this on the podcast yesterday um, or the last one we did. If you look at, for example, if a buyer is obligating themselves to pay the buyer's agent's commission, and let's say just for the keep the numbers easy, it's 3%. Let's say to keep the numbers easy, it's a $500,000 house. So that buyer is on the hook for the you know their down payment, all their normal closing costs, and now the 3% that they're paying towards their buyer's agent. Um, now, where is that buyer's agent going to come up with the money? Well, they can maybe finance it in. We think there's going to be changes to the mortgage regs that are going to happen very soon, which is going to make it easy to find, roll in that commission. But really what they're going to want to do is have the seller pay that commission, aren't they? Just as they traditionally have. And if they bought and sold real estate before, that's their expectation, regardless of these new rules. We're just calling it a seller's concession. It already was a seller's concession. Exactly. If you think about it. Exactly. So that doesn't it make sense that that buyer to save themselves from having to pay that 15 grand, they're going to be the ones that are searching out the sellers that are already agreeing to cover the, the concession uh, towards the buyer, just as if they were buying VA. Which or should also be easier for that buyer to find because where are you going to be advertising that? Everywhere except the MLS, which is also accessible to those very buyers. Well, we know that they can have, essentially the brokers can advertise that on their own sites yes. as long as it's not an MLS mm -hmm. site. So you're going to see a change in behavior where the buyers, because they're going to have to pay the buyer agent commission, because buyers are not going to want to go to the, the sellers directly. Again, the tradition in the United States, at least the last 30 plus years, has been you have a buyer's agent. And you could argue that the buyer's always been paying their commission. It's a, a function of what the final price was. So the market's going to sort itself out. The buyers are going to start searching for the, you know, the builders and the homeowners, the sellers rather, that are uh, agreeing ahead of time to pay their buyer's agent commission. Just as if you were a VA or a FHA buyer, you're searching out those that are the sellers that are willing to take FHA or VA uh, as a potential financing alternative. Because a lot of times, 
uh, in some markets, sellers will exclude those, or at least the listing agents will, mm -hmm. because working with a VA FHA buyer is more work than working with a traditional buyer. You guys get it? So we don't really believe that there's going to be any sort of you know long-term detrimental effect on buyer agency. If anything, this is going to separate the wheat from the chaff in regards to the agents that are actually professional, that have presentations that know how to present their value. Um, and the agents that weren't selling anything now will sell nothing in the future because it's just gotten a little bit more challenging for them. But the agents that were making money in the past are going to be the ones that have the highest probability of making a money in the future, provided that they adapt quickly to these new rules. And there will not be a precipitous drop in home prices. There will not be a precipitous drop in asking prices. None of those things are going to happen. We're in a long-term housing boob, which will last probably for the rest of our lifetimes, as far as any of you care, because at that point, you probably won't want to be selling real estate anymore anyway. Yeah, you know, what's interesting is, and I think you would agree with this because I've seen it come through your email and you forwarded some of this to me. We have such a huge amount of longtime listeners and certainly coaching clients who are emailing us after listening to a lot of the stuff that went down with the NAR thing last week, our podcast, the articles, all those things. And they're saying, you know what? I just want you guys to know I have zero problem with us. I, you know, a lot of them are thanking us for having them be ready ahead of time because we have been talking about this for quite some time, many podcasts, many coaching calls. They're saying, you know what? I'm on top of this. I'm looking forward to it. So you guys are asking or waiting around for, you know, someone to tell you some sort of like, uh, it, I read this, I see this, and, and this is the behavior of most humans. They will procrastinate adapting to the changes that they're going to have to accept. And what they're going to do is they're going to keep on looking for more information, more information, more videos, more Facebook posts, more, you know, big um, you know, voices from the mountain that are going to tell them this, that, or the other. More people parsing the settlement. More people acting like they know what the hell they're talking about with regard. Here's what you need to know. Here's the bottom line. We are in a long-term, ever-increasing uh, housing boom. It will be a boom in the sense that it's going to essentially happen slowly, but that's good. It's going to happen continuously. There's going to be a continued rise in prices and demand. You are in the right place at the right time. Please don't get stuck procrastinating, waiting for somebody to tell you it's time. It's okay for you to get back in the waters. We told you guys this two weeks ago after we learned about all these changes with, uh, you know, essentially the way commissions were going to work. Well, you now know. Get your butts back in the water. You have you got to be taking action when other people aren't. It's you know it's what we've been telling you every day on this podcast. The greatest fortunes of men and women have always been made during the greatest times of change. This will be perceived as one of the greatest times of change. So you've got to be part of what's going to be, not what was. And the only way for you to do that is to start getting into action and take massive action. And you will build so much momentum way past your competitors because of the fact that they're still waiting around for the clouds to clear and for a voice from uh, up high to tell them what direction to go. You know what direction to go. Get off your butts, get out there, be of service to folks and make more money now helping people than you ever have been before. It is a skills market now, guys. If the old market was, let's say, you know, who knew you, um, the new market is what you know. And you got to be clear about that because if you don't know how to survive and thrive in this new market, especially in the advent of AI, making it so that everyone's going to be perceived as being famous, what's your USP? What's your value proposition? Get your skills on, guys. So keep your mindset strong. Revisit your goals. Know if you're on track ahead or behind for the year and get back to work. Sign up for Premier Coaching today for free and we'll help you to surpass the goals that you've set for yourself. It is a good time of year, by the way, if you have set goals for yourself, to take a seriously hard look of whether you're you know, on track ahead or behind for your goals. It's okay if you're only on track. It's not okay if you're behind. If you're ahead of your goals, you need to up your goals because you've made your goals for this year too simple. And I'll suggest to you what we're building for is a magnificent return to a glorious housing market mm -hmm. that will happen probably, it feels to me, I'm going to guess the next 60 days. I, I would agree, and I think that there will be rocket boosters following that with, with the first little rate cut. I yep. don't think it's going to take that much because we've already become normalized to be right under seven. It's not going to be around eight like it was for a few months, and I think that's just going to kick things into high gear. Put you know more inventory in there, and we are super set. Well, this is worth mentioning, too. So Julie and I are part of EXP Realty. Um, in our EXP Realty uh, organization, we have over 3,500 agents. And one of the amazing things about EXP is they allow you to go in there and see of the 3,500 agents, you know, what the production is, who's selling, what they're selling, where they're selling, all the whole thing. EXP is incredible with, with allowing all of us to know exactly what's going on with our organizations. Well, I can go back and I can compare where we were 
last year. Now, we didn't have 3,500 agents last year at this time. We had fewer, but I still can compare the numbers and do percentages. I can see what percent of the agents are actually productive this time, uh, this year versus last time, you know. And I can also see what the month of month increases, the whole thing. And I'll tell you for sure, based on our 3,500 agents, I'm, I don't know if we have agents in every single state, but we probably do. We have them in, I think, four different countries. So we have a really good sampling of agents. In our group, I can tell you for sure, agents are selling more houses. There's more activity happening. There's gonna be more transactions this year. We can feel it. If you can't trust your you know, your real estate coaches that this is definitely going to happen, everyone's gonna be experiencing uh, this, really what will feel like a return to normalcy. So take massive action now. Don't wait for more information to land in your email. Absolutely positively join Premier Coaching. Go to premiercoaching.com or simply scroll down below and click the link. And remember to join the newsletter, harrisrealestatedaily.com, harrisrealestatedaily.com. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow.